Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to Crimson Vow Top 5 Draft Combos. In this video, I'm going to be going through five different combinations that you can assemble in Crimson Vow Draft to make your cards more than the sum of their parts and get some extra wins. Before I dive in, I want to remind you that if you enjoy this video, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe for more content, and comment with your questions, thoughts, and feedback. And without further ado, let's get to it, starting with an honorable mention. There seems to be a steal your creature, sacrifice that creature combo in every set these days, and Crimson Vow is no exception. With Bloody Betrayal, you can take your opponent's creature, and then you can use one of the numerous exploit cards to sacrifice that creature. I picked Mind Leech Ghoul in this example because it is the cheapest exploit creature, so you can steal their creature with Bloody Betrayal, play Mind Leech Ghoul to sacrifice that creature, and after you've hit them with it, of course, and then you kind of turn Bloody Betrayal into a removal spell. So that's a nice combo to be aware of, but I only wanted to give it an honorable mention because we see these steal and sacrifice combos all the time, and I wanted to give the big list combos to some of the new combos that we see in the Crimson Vow specifically. So, moving on to number five, we have The Invitation. Gluttonous Guest, Courier Bat. Not only a flavor combo, but also a gameplay combo. Because while the Courier Bat is delivering the invitation to the guest, in the gameplay itself, Gluttonous Guest comes with a blood token. You can use that blood token to discard a creature card into your graveyard, and when you do, you gain one life, which will then allow your Courier Bat to enter the battlefield and have its trigger actually come into play, because the Courier Bat only returns a creature from your graveyard to your hand if you gained a life this turn, or gained some life this turn. So Gluttonous Guest gains you the life and discards the creature, and then Courier Bat essentially draws back that creature. So you end up up a card, because when you discard the card with the blood token, you drew a card. So it's a cool little combination of two commons that play well together, and so that's one that is definitely good to be aware of. Moving on to the number four combo, we have Tough Luck, which it's going to be tough luck for your opponents if you can assemble some of these toughness-based combos based around Unhallowed Phalanx, which on its like base side is kind of weak because it doesn't attack particularly well, it's kind of tough to block with sometimes because it comes in tapped, but if you can assemble some of these combos, it's going to be devastating because Unhallowed Phalanx on turn five curves perfectly into Flourishing Hunter as a... When it enters the battlefield, you gain life equal to the greatest toughness among other creatures you control, and so you'll gain 13 life, which is just a staggering amount of life and makes it really hard to lose the game. And your opponent's just going to be sitting there with their aggro cards like, none of these matter anymore. And you also still have these massive blockers. If you are trying to figure out how to close the game with these massive toughness creatures, you can use Catapult Fodder, which is the front side of the more effective card. It will flip if you have three creatures with high toughness, so you have to kind of build your board state around it, but... Then you flip it into Catapult Captain, and you can start flinging your Unhallowed Phalanx at your opponent to make them lose 13 life. And then the Capper is Ancient Lumberknot. If you're playing Black Green anyway, if you're playing all these high toughness creatures, you might as well just attack directly with Unhallowed Phalanx for 13 points of damage. So some pretty cool toughness-based combos you can assemble, and uh, definitely some good things to be aware of with the Unhallowed Phalanx, which gives you some neat little play to it if you are in a deck that can make use of it. Not really a card you'll have to prioritize because most people aren't going to be able to use it, but if you can, then you uh, can get a little bit of an advantage. Moving on to the number three combo, we have I Want That Back, where you place a Garda's Imprisonment on your opponent's creature, and then you activate the five mana Exile Enchanted Creature effect of the card, and then in response to that trigger going on the stack, you play Alchemist's Retrieval, targeting your own Sigarda's Imprisonment, and so for six mana, you get to essentially buy back your Sigarda's, you get to exile their creature with Sigarda's Imprisonment and buy it back to your hand, so you can put the Imprisonment onto a different creature. So that's just a nice combo to be aware of, because sometimes you just want to have an extra hard removal spell instead of like a tempo removal spell, like an Alchemist Retrieval, which is more like just soft interaction versus like just getting rid of the creature. So if you have your Imprisonment, you can combine the two to get another Sigarda's Imprisonment, which is quite a nice effect. And you don't even have to pay the cleave cost for Retrieval because it's a target, a non-land permanent uh, that you control. So that's a nice little upside for Sigarda's Imprisonment and Alchemist Retrieval if you are in blue-white. Moving on to the number two combo in the set, we have Poison Arrows, which is the combination between Ballista Watcher and Toxic Scorpion. So essentially, the Ballista Watcher can deal one damage to any target, and Toxic Scorpion can give it death target creature you control death touch. And so what happens is, if you give Ballista Watcher death touch, then you are able to 
activate it ability and ping a creature and because your guy has death touch you'll get to kill any creature you want so that's a nice combo to be aware of that turns your ballista watcher into a, a removal spell if you combine it with the toxic scorpion and if it does become nighttime and you have the ballista wielder which doesn't have to tap to activate and you have enough mana to cast toxic scorpion you can even activate it twice and mow down multiple creatures in one turn if you can get up to eight mana so that's just a really cool combo to be aware of as well just really um like sniping your opponent's creatures with your poison arrows and then finally, what is the number one combo to assemble the set? Well, this one is a bit of a doozy. I'm just calling this one the achievement, because if you manage to assemble this one and actually do something meaningful with it, that's just going to be pretty cool. So essentially, if you have Repository Scab, when it enters the battlefield, it has an exploit trigger that goes on the stack. And in response to the exploit trigger, you can cast Undying Malice, targeting your own Repository Scab. And then you can exploit the Repository Scab uh, by sacrificing itself, which, because your Undying Malice is now back in your graveyard, you can then return the Undying Malice back to your hand, and Repository Scab will die. And then you return it to the battlefield, um, and you kind of can repeat that loop for however much extra black mana you have after, like, it does cost 5 to start, but let's just say you have 10 mana, hypothetically, and you have all, a bunch of it is black mana. You can just kind of loop this 5 different times. You can just have your Repository Scab enter the battlefield, die, and cast. you can cast your Undying Malice for, like, every black mana you have, and what ends up happening is you end up with a 4-4 four, four Repository Scab, which is fine, and you end up with Undying Malice back in your hand, which is just kind of funny, or whatever other instant or sorcery you wanted from your graveyard. So, just to clarify the loop, you play the Scab with the trigger uh, exploit trigger on the stack, cast Undying Malice on Scab. Undying Malice is now in your graveyard, you target your, your Repository Scab to have it exploit itself, so it sacrifices itself. It has now died, which triggers the Undying Malice, which... Um, uh, First, the Undying Malice comes back to your hand because the Repository Scab has exploited a creature. And then undying, the Undying Malice trigger happens. The Repository Scab comes back into play, and you then, with a plus one, plus one counter, and then you have the option to cast the Undying Malice on it again and repeat the loop. And uh, so if you have enough mana, you can just do this over and over and over. And not only you can get uh, however many death triggers you want, if you have any cards that care about creatures dying, you can get some triggers for having cards enter your graveyard. There are some cards that care about, like, creatures entering your graveyard. Uh, you can also have... Um, some triggers for having cards with, um, like you can have some triggers for just casting instants and sorcery spells. So for example, if you have Kessig Flame Breather, every time you do the loop, you deal a damage to the opponent, um, which is really funny. So if you have like a bunch of mana, you can like Lava Axe your opponent with just random combos. I mean, that is the three color combo, but it's just kind of wild. Or Frenzy Devils can just get plus two, plus two for every time you loop the combo. And there's just a bunch of cool little uh, synergies you can maybe find that uses that combo. And if you do something really sweet with that, comment that below in one of my youtube videos because i would love to see what you can do with that sort of combo it just seems really funny and uh really kind of neat and the sort of thing that i don't know it just looks kind of like a sweet combo like you can trigger it like a few times if you have both those cards in your deck and also just want to note that undying malice also plays well with other exploit cards it doesn't just have to be repository scab but you can't just keep looping it but if you want to exploit a creature to itself you can use the undying malice to get your exploit creature back so if you want to double up on that trigger for some reason uh, that's just a combo to be worth uh worth knowing but yeah just kind of a fun little combo for you to try and assemble, and uh, that's why I put it at number one and called it the achievement. Um, but yeah, that is going to do it for the top five combos in Crimson Vow Draft. Remember that if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe for more Crimson Vow content and other draft content, and comment below if you have any questions or feedback or any combos that you found that you would like to highlight so that I can find them and maybe try to employ them myself. And if you did make it all the way to the end of this video, the hashtag wedding combo to let me know you made it all the way to the end of the video because a wedding is the ultimate combo between bride and groom uh, in holy matrimony. So uh, just a classic combo in and of itself. Um, that is going to do it for this video, though. I really do hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you next time.